All right, I promise this will be the last Next.js complaint about the caching. I wanted to share something that I think is actually pretty good to talk about when you're dealing with systems that are eventually consistent. So what is an eventually consistent system? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and draw some diagrams because I think that'll help it demonstrate what that is. So typically you have an API and the API needs to do some type of update, right? It needs to write some record into a database. But behind the scenes, a database, depending on how large your data is, it might be split up into something called a cluster and your data actually has to get like sent around this cluster. These could be like replicas, but, but overall, I think just, you know, calling this a cluster is good enough. And what happens is that this allows you to store a lot of data, but the trade-off is that your data is eventually consistent. So what that means is that if you were to write a record, so I'm gonna go ahead and say like one, write a record. And then directly after that, you say, hey, I wanna read a record. What actually happens is that the data that comes back is potentially going to be stale, right? This could be old data because it takes time, usually up to a second or two. For example, if you're using DynamoDB, that is a system that is eventually consistent when you read, unless you specify certain things that make it strongly consistent reads and writes. So the idea is that the data actually, when you write it, it takes a while to propagate through your system. And later on, when you do a read directly after writing, you may get back the old version of the data. So I'm going to go ahead and just say eventually consistent so you guys kind of understand what I'm talking about. This is something that's actually you're going to see in the real world and it's hard to deal with. Okay, now let's look at Next.js because I actually did just run into this issue trying to build out some pages in Next.js. And you might say this is the most obscure example I can give, but I do think it highlights the example. So I have this other page here and when it loads, it fetches data using React Server Components from an endpoint. So let's just go ahead and look at this other directory. Notice that when it loads, it fetches names from someplace, right? Some API or a database. But the idea here is that this is eventually consistent. What I'm reading on this line may not be the latest up-to-date data. And because of that, we're passing names into this client component down here. And I'm actually setting it in state because I wanted to do some type of optimistic updates so that when a user were to click on this X, it'll delete it instantly, okay? So down here we have some code where basically when you click on the button it removes the name by basically doing a filter on the state so that'll be an instantaneous ui update and then secondly it calls an action which makes a request to remove the name okay, and i also revalidate this other path but let me go ahead and just show you what happens when i try to do this so i'm going to go ahead and just click g to get rid of g and then i'm going to go to some other route and then i'm going to go back to other Okay, notice the G is still there. So even though I told Next to revalidate this path, because of the way the data works, front end is gonna make a request to the back end and it's going to refetch. But like I showed in that diagram, that data could be potentially stale. Okay, so it fetches the data too soon basically, which, which makes sense, right? You might have to actually like wait a second or two before you can get the latest up-to-date data. But the issue is even if I were to refresh this page and delete F, then I go and I wait. I'll just wait for like five seconds. Awkwardly sit here in silence and I'll go back. Notice that F is still there. Okay, and I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out and I know I've talked about videos about the client router cache. If you look at this code, I've tried using experimental use optimistic. This didn't fix it. I've tried making this page like force refresh when it uh, mounts for the first time. That didn't fix it. Let me just show you that because I know you guys aren't gonna believe me until I show you. So I'm going to click E and then I'm going to go back to GG. And then when I click other, the component should mount and it should have called router.refresh, which should have fetched the latest data. And actually, if you go through and you add console logs, you'll see this get the latest version of the data. Okay. Um, I've tried different things. Like I've tried removing the revalidate path. This doesn't seem to even help in this situation. So like you can just remove it. I've tried wrapping things and start transitions. I've tried a lot of different stuff, but I found the only thing that actually gets this to refresh is by using a use effect and listen for when this initial names is changing. Because for some reason, when we fetch the latest data, like this is actually printing out the latest data and that's getting passed as a prop. But for some reason, it, the React is not re-rendering, right? So I had to add this use effect to basically force React to refresh whenever initial names changes. And that makes sense because I guess this is cached behind the scenes in the React um, tree, the state tree. And you kind of have to like tell React that, hey, like this could potentially change. 
And when it does, go ahead and change that use state. So if you're trying to do optimistic updates with state like I am doing, you may run into a situation where you have to do this. Keep this router refreshed, but I don't think we even need it. So now if I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the UI and delete D, I'm gonna go to GG, and then I'm gonna go back and notice that it does actually delete that after it eventually updates. Not the best user experience, kind of sucks. Um, let me try it without this router that refresh, just to make sure I'm not teaching some bad information. I'm gonna go ahead and do a force refresh on the page. I'm gonna click C to delete it. I'm gonna go to a different route. I'm gonna come back and notice that the C is still there. So the only combination I can figure out to get this working is you have to do a router refresh when the client component mounts and you also have to add a use effect to have this thing trigger react to tell it to re-render this component. If you guys understand how this works under the hood, leave a comment, let me know I'm doing something wrong. But uh, yeah, I, I wasted a lot of time trying to figure out how to actually get this stuff to refresh on an eventually consistent endpoint. Um, and this was my fix. And, and trust me, I've added console logs everywhere. I added debuggers. I've stepped through this stuff. Like, I'm pretty sure this is the only fix. I also, people have been pointing out that there's like a new React version. I've also updated the 13.4.13 where people say that calling like revalidate path fixes issues. I think the issue I'm running into is actually a little bit different because it's just a whole nother paradigm of issues with eventually consistent systems. So I've tried that as well. Um, I think this actually came out today, this version that has some client side cache busting built into it. I guess just keep that in mind. When you guys are using Next.js and you see stuff not updating, I guarantee you it's probably the client side router that is caching things when it shouldn't be. To be honest, this might be my last video about me bashing Next.js. I think my next video is I'm going to actually try Remix on my channel and see how much better it is than Next. Have a good day and happy coding.